So uh, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about dreams today, and we might get into some dry bones, and we'll see where the Spirit takes it. But have you ever asked if dreams are just a figment of your imagination? So many people say it's something I ate, it's just pizza, and they don't really cherish the love letters of the Spirit. And so we've got to have a paradigm shift to know that dreams really do come true, but we've got to bring them out of the realm of the Spirit, write them down. The Bible says, write the vision down to make it plain so you can run with it. And not only you, but there are others that are coming alongside you to run with you as well. So in the realm of the Spirit, we know that God is infinite love, he has no beginning, no end. He is boundless. He's unlimited. He is vast. He's eternal. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. There's nothing that we can even comprehend about him, but his language that he communicates himself to us is through vision. Because a vision will imprint on you. You can recall a vision. You can experience the emotions of a vision and God visits us in a visitation through vision realm to show us who he is. He comes to us through dreams to show us who we are in him. And so the dreams have to be interpreted because they're parabolic, they're metaphoric and there's hidden mystery within them that has to be revealed and unsealed so that you can become that which God is showing you you are. So that means you have to seek his face. You have to go before him and you have to say, God, I don't know, but you know all. Why did you show me this? What does that symbol mean? What does that represent for me? So that then you can get wisdom and knowledge. It says that knowledge fills the house and you are the house or the mansions of God. And so he's building you and he's bringing you into the new things. John 5, 24 says, most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but shall pass from death into eternal infinite life. So dreams have the power to awaken us into our destiny. People always say, ask me two questions. Why was I born? What is my purpose? What is my destiny? And those things are concealed in the dreams that God has given you. So if those questions haven't been answered in your life, you're not paying attention to the dreams because he shows you who you are. He tells you and the way God speaks is to his prophets is through dreams and visions. So if he's gonna speak to you, he's gonna speak through a picture language. He wants you to know the callings and giftings that he's placed upon you, but dreams are vapors so that if we don't capture them in a quick moment, within five minutes, they have disappeared. I always say, keep your cell phone by your bed on automatic record. And when, at 222 in the morning or 444 in the morning or 333, whenever he shows up, which is never the convenient time, we get out of the bed or we get to the phone or we do whatever we need to do to record the visitation that's coming. And the, but the one thing I will encourage you, wake yourself up enough that when you're recording it, you're not doing it in tongues. <laughs> a dream is already a mystery. So at least speak clearly into the microphone so that you don't have to interpret a tongue and the dream all in the same night. So it's important for us to know where God is taking us and we need to exercise our imagination in a positive manner that's gonna help establish a greater measure of the Spirit of Christ operating in our life. That's your goal. Less of me, more of him. And so our goal is to know Jesus because he's the one that knows how to investigate the spirit realm and he would know how to get into the heavenly realms to see the vision realm of what his father was doing. 
And the scripture tells us that Jesus only did that which he saw the Father doing. So we have the same access. We have the mind of Christ. We have spiritual vision. We have Christ within us. We have the kingdom of God in us. So we are spirit beings if we're born again. That way we can also mirror God's actions here on earth and that's what we're called to do. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, most assuredly I say unto you, prophesy, decree, declare to you, the son can do nothing of himself but that which he sees in vision his father doing. For whatever the father does action, the son also does in like manner. For the father loves the son and shows him all things through dreams, visions, he shows him miracles, revelation, knowledge that he himself does and then he will show us even greater works. That's where this era is going to be focused on is the greater works. What we have seen and experienced in the past has been foreplay. God is wanting now his church to arise with healing in our wings so that we can manifest not just the miracles, but the creative miracles. They were telling me in the green room this morning about Rennie prophesying over a lady who had a, a amputated leg and wearing a fake leg and the leg grew out. That level of miracle is going to be commonplace because that is the dimension that God wants the body and the bride operating in because he is a creator. We are created in his image, but we must take on his likeness so that we can begin to be a voice of God in the kingdom of God and demonstrating his power. My sister passed of kidney cancer several years ago, and when she was in a hospice bed, the Lord said, I had to leave her bedside because I was laying hands on her and I was casting the cancer out of her and it was coming out. Cancer is a spirit. It was manifesting and it was coming out. And then the Holy Spirit said, no, Barbie, stop. And I was confused. I said, why, Lord? Why? The word says, cast him out. He says, yes, but she doesn't just need a miracle. She needs a creative miracle. And he says, I want you to go to Malaysia. There's a gate there and it's called the miracle gate. I want you to prophesy to that gate that it becomes the creative miracle gate so that those miracles can come into the earth realm. And I left her 10 days, gone, ministered. God came when she was passing because of, um, I was contending her husband wasn't a believer so he didn't like the fact that I said, you don't have to God, ask God, if it be thy will. That's a prayer of doubt. If you ever pose those questions, if it be thy will, you're praying in doubt already. So God wants us to begin to step into a new thing, but I asked the Lord if I could be with her in the realm of the spirit when she transcended to heaven. I was in Texas, she was in Florida. The Holy Spirit said, tonight's the night that I'm visiting her. And he said, the prayer bowls in heaven are full and I'm going to go to her and I'm gonna ask her which way she wants me to pour the bowls. And I said, I wanna be there, Lord. Let me, you know, Paul visited the churches in the realm of the spirit. There are realms of the spirit that we have got to get into to be effective in this hour. The Lord's Spirit caught me up and took me to Florida. I'm in her living room now, and I asked her, Brenda, have you seen Jesus yet? No, but I've seen Dad. He's transitioned already to heaven. She saw him waiting for her, and then Jesus appeared, and he walked to her bed, and he picked up her hands, and he kissed them, and he said, I have come because the prayer bowls are full, and I need to ask you, which way do you want me to pour them 
If I pour them one way, you will get a brand new body. Your bone structure will be completely healed. Your kidneys, everything, all the cancer will be gone. You can stay here and work in the ministry with Barbie. She's asked this of me. Or I can pour the bowl the other way and you will receive a spirit body and you can go to heaven with me right now. Well, that's no choice. (laughs) Who wants to stay here and work in a ministry when you can go with Jesus to heaven? And of course, that was her choice. But she became a seed that unlocked the realm of the creative miracles to manifest at a greater level. Every seed that drops into the ground brings forth a harvest. And so she became that because she was a very selfless person. And so I was excited to hear that years back, Rennie was already moving in this realm because he shows the prophets first. He doesn't do anything in the earth realm without first showing the prophets. Then it comes down to the body and all of us can begin working in that that realm that God has for us. The conscious awareness of focused faith that is centered on indwelling in the presence of Christ who is in the kingdom in us, this is what gives us the ability to choose what state of being we want to be in. You know, God says, I'm not gonna dwell with you in poverty. I'm not gonna dwell with you in lack. I'm not gonna dwell with you in sickness because his presence is not there. He is in a higher realm and a higher place and he doesn't come down and dwell with us in self-pity and depression and lack and ignorance and whatever else we get into in our carnal reasoning. He says, my ways are higher than yours and my thoughts are higher than yours. And he says, come up here and let me show you things that will take place. And so he is a generous God who wants to show us and demonstrate to us, but we have to come into a state of higher spiritual houses. This is your temple, this is your house, this is a mansion. And when he moves in, he expands it to where there are no limitations because the king is in the field and he has taken up residence So we begin to move and we can see when he said, in my father's house, there are many mansions or states of being, places where we can go and dwell and live there before we die. This is the thing. Most people teach this is after you die, you go and inherit your mansion in heaven. But in the scripture, he says that I... If it were not so, I would have told you, but I go to prepare a place for you. Our present state of consciousness is sending into a new level, moving us into a desired state of being with him. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again through answered prayers, through dreams, through visions, through visitations. So God is coming to us all the time but sometimes we're not perceiving it because we haven't opened our spiritual eyes or our our knowledge to understand him in the dimensions of the realm of the spirit. But he says, I will come again to you and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And see, the I am of God is what he sent Moses to Pharaoh as. He says, you tell him, The I am that I am has sent you. And then we saw the massive miracles that Moses did. See, but Moses too wanted to deflect. He says, I'm not a good speaker. Let Aaron come with me. And it says God was mad. Because that's a a fault that we have When God comes to us and he says, I wanna give you this dimension and I want you to move in this miracle, I want you to prophesy that, we call somebody who's already moving in it and we defer to them rather than developing our own spiritual muscles and stepping into it and being responsible for the calling God has placed on us. 
We never develop if we keep saying, I defer to you. God said, Moses, you do this, and he pointed out his weakness. He pointed out his flaw. And God said, okay then, all right, I'll send both you and Aaron, and you be God to Aaron. And see, even us saying, you be God to Aaron, if I said, I'm gonna be God to you, people go, you ain't God. But God dwells in me. And Jesus knew that Christ, God had, his father had sent him, and he knew that the father and the son were one. And then when we're born again, what do we join into? What do we become one with? We become one with God and God is in us. And Jesus himself said, you are God's. And see, until we come into a reality of who we are in Christ, we're not gonna step into a dimension of power and authority operating in the authority that is in us through Christ and the Father and the Holy Spirit dwelling in a temple or a mansion because we haven't gone to the place that Jesus has gone before us to prepare for us that where he is, we can be there also, which means we are already seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, by the right hand of the Father, dwelling there in his presence in power and authority. He said, take dominion, rule and reign, replenish, heal, deliver, do miracles. We are kingdom ambassadors, but yet we say, oh, wretched man that I am, I'm nothing but a little worm. Well, no, that worm died. When I received Christ, I was crucified and I died. I, I'm dead. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but the Christ in me moves through me and he shows me dreams and he shows me visions of who I am. We have to take on the I am of God. I had a dream that I was at an airport, could not get onto the plane because there were two attendants on either side, which later I found out were angels. And they said, who are you? Oh, I'm, I'm Barbie Breathitt. No, you're not. Oh, Dr. Barbie Breathitt. No, you're not. I'm thinking, okay, I'm not, okay. Pick out the, I had an imaginary end vision. I was somewhere in the future because I had a Louis Vuitton with a matching Louis Vuitton wallet. And I picked it up and I took out my uh, driver's license and I was gonna prove it to them. And they asked me the question, who is God and what are his names? I said, my God is Jesus Christ, the Lord, Savior, Master of the universe, the Creator, the Almighty. And I began to list off the names of God that I knew in my spirit. But it wasn't enough to get to the next level of where God wanted to take the body of Christ and me individually. He said, he go, they went to scripture and they said, those who know their God shall do great exploits and you don't even know the dimensions of his name. From that point, I went to scripture and started digging out the names of God, the characteristics, the attributes, the functions of each name of God opening another dimension because the name of God is a key for us that takes us into another mansion. It's the one that opens the door so that we can access all that is available to us because we need to know our God as the multifaceted wisdom of God who is so dimensional that we have marginalized him and limited his ability to move in our lives with not even knowing the name and of his functions and his attributes and how to exalt him properly. And I repented. I've found over 1,500 
names, characteristics, attributes of God. And I'm working on coordinating that with the musical sound and frequencies that will open those realms by speaking that name and releasing healing in other dimensions. Because he is the key. Jesus is the door. And so God is growing us up so that we can begin to step into and receive from him things that we haven't. He says, I will come again and I will receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. And that's why I created the I am cards. I thought if I need to know about I am, I need to know who I am in Christ. And if we don't know the word and it's not in us, we can't prophesy it. We can't decree it. And so God is wanting us to step into the realms that he has for us to do because he is in these stately mansions and he's activating our thoughts and he's challenging us to change and change means repentance. You know, he says he doesn't want us going back to the elementary things again. If we stay at the elementary level, we never ascend into what dimensions he's called us to. And so he says, let me take you to where I am. And so he comes and he visits us at night through the dreams, through vision, and he's showing us this is who I am. And then we have to receive it. And see, sometimes it's hard for us to receive. Oh, no, 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 that's okay. Thank you, but no. Uh, no, I'm an anointing hog because we have a hog problem in Texas. So I'm thinking you look at the environment you're in and if there's a problem, you know, spiritualize it. And so we need, if I hear a prophetic word go out, I say, me too. I don't covet them and I don't get jealous of what God spoke over them. But God is big enough that if I heard it, I receive it. I receive it so that God can continue to multiply us and move us into new measures because he wants us to take dominion. You know, there's a value of wisdom. He said, my son, if you have received my spoken words and treasure my spoken commands within you so that you are able to hear them, hear the wisdom and apply it in your heart, act on it, understand it. Yes, if you ask, crying out for discernment and lift up your voice, ask for understanding if you act and seek for her as silver, act searching for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find or receive the knowledge of God. Wisdom is not of this world. The only way we obtain wisdom is in a transition process from where we are to a higher mansion of where he is. In that process, we learn how to take on the I am of him and we are transformed into his image and likeness when we arrive in that higher mansion of understanding and we have the knowledge of God because we have a renewed mind that is in Christ. So that mind of Christ is what gives us access to knowing what God is saying to us so that we can obtain wisdom and it causes us to fear and tremble before an awesome God because he is everything and we are nothing. And we walk in humility and I think that God is putting a new focus on humility in this hour because we have seen the abuses of the pride and the excess and of I'm the, the club of me and you and no more, just us three. And that's not godly. I've been in green rooms for years now and I'm usually just the quiet one sitting in the corner because I don't want to enter into what's going on. But you see the influence that God is putting on the unknown, the hidden ones that have been percolating and processing and repenting and saying, Lord, I humble myself 
Because the Bible tells us, humble yourself and then the Lord will exalt you in due time. Due time comes at the fullness of time when we've been through a preparation process and we have taken on the image and likeness of God so that when they push us forward, they see Jesus. And he is the lovely one. He is the beautiful one. And God wants us to have that. He said, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. Those that know how to enter into the realm of glory. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He grants the path, he guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice and equity and every good thing. God has all good things for you. I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. And so those plans are to prosper us and prosperity is spiritual prosperity, but it's also a natural prosperity. I wish that you would prosper as your soul prospers. So as our soul comes under submission to the spirit realm, which is wisdom, communion, and God consciousness, we are conscious of God in us at all times. Corinthians says, every time I turn my face towards the Lord, another veil is removed. Christ's consciousness is going to push us into the next dimension so that we can go into the realms of the future to see who we are in Christ then and bringing back. You know, when a prophetic word comes to you or a dream or a vision, God's going to relate to you in the fullness of that dream, vision, or prophecy as if you already are. Whether you come into agreement with it or not, because so many times we say, oh, so-and-so could, or he could, or she could, but not, I just don't think I can. When we step into that doubt and unbelief, God is a preceding word, so he keeps moving forward, and we polarize ourselves at that position of doubt and unbelief. It's not until we will repent and come into agreement with who God says that we are, that then we have that momentum to be accelerated into the place where we're walking beside him again because he's proceeded, not waiting on us, but he's relating to us as if we already are. We are the only ones that are limiting ourselves because he has already done all things for us and it is already stored in glory and we already have the keys of the kingdom. We already have access to his mind. We already have all wisdom, all power and authority has been given unto him and who did he give it to? Us. So we have, once we get the revelation of who Christ is in us, we go into those mansions and from mansion to mansion to mansion, from glory to glory to glory, because every mansion has a different training camp for us. And mansions, you know, they have walk-in closets. My favorite part of the house. So you go into these mansions and you can try on all these different mantles, all these different robes, you can practice it in the realm of the spirit through your dreams and see yourself already doing those things. And then your mind, your brain will record it as a memory, as an already happened event. Then when you awaken, you are. I am a healer. I am a miracle worker. I am prophetic. I am whatever you saw yourself being, you take on the I am's of God and you are. God visited Solomon. When he visited Solomon, he said, ask of me what you will. When God comes to you, what is on your I will list? What are you going to ask of God? Because in John, it says up to this time, you've asked nothing in my name. So ask largely that your joy may become full because God wants us moving in the fullness of his presence, his power, his joy, his strength. 
And so we have to ask largely, ask, seek, knock, and the door Christ Jesus is open to you. When you enter in at salvation, that's just one doorway. Then there are other doors. He ends infinite doors for us to walk in and through. And the only way we get to the Father is through Christ. So we step through one door and we learn that dimension. Now we need wisdom to come because now I need to transition from this dimension through another door into another dimension that I don't know. Wisdom comes there to lead, guide, and direct me because the spirit of truth said, I will lead, guide, and direct you into all truth. And Christ is the spirit of truth and truth lives in us. So we're able to rightly discern things in the realm of the spirit. Dreams enable us to tap into the superior ways of the divine spirit by enabling us to glance into the future, into the imperceivable realms of wisdom, counsel, knowledge, and might, the seven spirits of God. Come forth out of Isaiah 11, 2 and Revelation 4, 5. The dreams and visions that God birthed in us bring revelation, illumination, and an infinite inspiration to bring us into spiritual momentum. He is spirit, so he's gonna talk to us and relate to us through a spirit language and we have to learn his ways because they're higher. It's a symbolic metaphoric language where one symbol, it says a picture can paint a thousand words. Same thing with symbols. A symbol for me is going to relate to me in one way and it's gonna relate to you in another way and we need the Holy Spirit then to interpret it because I absolutely love dogs but some of you might have been mauled by a dog. So a dog coming into my dream represents my faithful little, little. she's a 130 pound Rottweiler. She's a trained killer. She'll lick you to death. But to me, that brings comfort because she's there trained to protect me. But my little Yorkie four pound is more vicious than she is. And she's more intimidating, I think. But to me, that dog is a great symbol. But if it's not to you, then we have to have the Holy Spirit to interpret what does it mean to you and why did he choose that symbol to come forth into you. Different dreams and vision states of Christ consciousness empower us to visit different levels of elegant mansions that are located somewhere in the future. We have heard me say, and I say to you, I am going away, but I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would also rejoice because I am going to the Father, for my Father is greater than I am. We realize that there's always someone greater, and we find that person who is greater, and we allow them to mentor, teach, train. And Jesus realized my father is greater, but he also knew that he was God. And he also knew that they were one. And see, when we recognize the oneness of who we are called to be in Christ, we're able to move in that revelation. Through dreams, we can see ourselves in a different state of being, visualizing another spiritual place. And once we go there once in the spirit, our spirit man realizes and memorizes how to get there again. If you've ever been translated into heaven, you can be translated again. If you've ever been transported to another geographic state or place, you can be transported again because once you enter into a specific gateway, your spirit man knows how to go there. That's why Jesus said, he said, I'm going and you know the way. And Doubting Thomas said, we don't know the way, Lord, but we do by the Spirit. We don't by our carnal reasoning, but we do if we get into the Word and allow God to begin to show us. So we must first believe something is possible, then seek it, then see it, then achieve it. But you can't see it unless you believe. You can't see unless you exercise the faith. 
So faith is the gateway or an umbilical cord that attaches us into the realm of the spirit so that nothing becomes impossible for us. And if you see it happening, it's already done in the realm of the spirit. So it happens in the spirit first, then it manifests in the natural. So your dreams are gonna foretell of what's gonna take place in your life. And he tells us sometimes 10 years in advance He shows us something and then he seals it up. He says, don't talk about it. Wait, rest in it. So we enter into rest and we're taking on that. We're becoming that. We're maturing in it. And then at that appointed time, he unseals it and he brings it forth. That's what the world would call deja vu, That's what God calls a sealed dream. And so he brings revelation knowledge to us and he seals it up in us so that we've already experienced it. Then he creates the man or woman that we need to be to carry the weight of that kabod glory upon us so that at the appointed time, we're able to step forth and orchestrate and demonstrate that which happened 10 years ago in the realm of dream because he's going to go before us to prepare the place. And he's then waiting for us in that place that where he is, now we have also arrived there because he's the door and he's a gentleman. So he opens the door for you. And then you just walk in and do what you saw the father doing years ago. We emerge clothed in kingly, priestly robes with the attributes of God and we advance his power. When, um, see if I can find my escape button. I wanna talk to you a little bit about the bones as well. I think I've got a few more minutes. We'll hit it quick. When, Can let me ask you a question. This is my dog's bone. I borrowed it from her this morning. She was not happy. I put it in my briefcase and I went to the bedroom, brushed my teeth. When I came out, the bone was out of my briefcase. And she was like, no, mama, that's my bone. And I'm I'm thinking, okay, I promise I won't chew on it, but I need to borrow it as a object lesson. Can this bone live? Can this bone become a cow again? Because this is a cow bone. (laughs) But we'll pretend like it's a human bone. Can it live? So God takes Ezekiel and he drops him into a realm of the spirit. And he says to him, he says, can these bones live? And see, Ezekiel was counterparts with Daniel. And Ezekiel's name means strengthened by the hand of the Lord. And see, the hand of the Lord or the spirit of the Lord is what transports us or what translates us. So when the spirit of the Lord is there, present, he is taking us into different dimensions and places. So Ezekiel served under King Nebuchadnezzar And Nebuchadnezzar was fearful of all the good-looking Hebrew men. So he decides, I'm going to castrate them, eliminate their ability to produce, and then I'm going to dismember them, and then I'm going to throw their bodies out into a field, and I'm going to let the vultures devour them. So now they just become dry bones in a desert. And this is where God takes Ezekiel out there into that barren place And he asked, can these bones live? And he says, Lord, you know. In Ezekiel 37, it says that the Lord caused me to pass by and I looked to see and I wondered with my spirit eyes and I saw the bodies and he said, son of man, can these bones live? And I humbly answered, O Lord, you know. He said, prophesy to these bones. Hear the word of the Lord. And see, when the spirit of the Lord was speaking, he took Ezekiel and he brought him back to 
the Genesis. Why did he take him there? When you see the Spirit of the Lord in Scripture, he's going to take you places. Where do we know that a bone was used to create a person? Adam and Eve. So did Ezekiel know how to, to raise the bones and do what he needed to do? He knew God knew, and the Spirit of the Lord was there, so he took him back to the Genesis, and he shows him Adam, all stretched out as a dust pile, and he says, you're gonna need to use the ruach, the breath of the spirit to blow into this and you need to use your mouth to speak to it and you're gonna need the four winds that are the creative dimension along with the Holy Spirit to speak to those dry bones because there has to be a sound and a frequency that is released to cause a shaking to come forth that's gonna cause bones to shake and rattle and roll and they're gonna come together. He said, then when you prophesy as I command you, that's the key. Not as I feel, I think, I want, I believe. What is God saying? I have to prophesy as he commands me. You do too. And so he, he is showing him. He says, okay, here is Adam. Watch this, Ezekiel. And Adam rises with breath in him. And he's able to move and live and breathe and have his being in Christ. Then he says, but he needs a helper. He needs a mate. So I'm gonna take a rib from him and I'm gonna speak to this rib and out of a rib, I'm gonna form a woman. And that's good news for us ladies. You know why? Adam was just a dust bag. <laughs> full of hot air. But when God created us, he took it out of an already formed beautiful body and we're out of a rib. So that's why we're more pretty than they are. That's why we make a good helpmate because when he saw Eve, he said, whoa, man. All right. So God is, picks him up, he takes him back there, he shows him in the Genesis what, and you know, uh, we see different things happening because it wasn't shortly after that. They walked in a realm of glory with God, clothed in the glory. And then when the serpent came with the spirit of pride, and see, that's why God's dealing with pride in this era. We have to take on that cloak of humility because the opposite of that is pride and arrogance, and I know it all. And so if we operate, or you know people operating in that, that's coming under judgment right now because we have to be clothed in humility. And that's why it says in Ezekiel, it says God lifted him up, and he brought him to the valley, and it said, and he sat him down. That's, to me, where we relate to God. He said, when Jesus was on the earth, he said, Mary and Martha, one of them's up doing him busy, busy, busy body. The other was sitting down at his feet and learning from the master. And see, that is our position because Ezekiel said, you know, I don't know, but you can show me all things. Move me by your spirit and show me from the beginning how you do this. And he did. And so we're currently in the era of the mouth where God is releasing not the angels that touched Isaiah with the coal of fire, but the hand of God himself is coming on us to make us fiery ministers of God because he wants to restore the reverential fear of the Lord and he wants to redeem a church out of a shame season that we've been placed in because we didn't prophesy by the command of the Lord. We prophesied out of our own thoughts. 
And so God is going to redeem us and bring us to another place and give us a second chance. It says here in Ezekiel, he, God spoke to him a second time. God is always the God of the second chance. Thank you, Jesus. If we don't get it right the first time, he says, that's okay, dust yourself off. Let's try it again. He said, prophesy to the bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, surely I will cause breath to enter you. That is the breath of the spirit. That is the ruach. That is the creative dimension of God being breathed into a bunch of dry bones. And then he said, I will put sinew on you. I will clothe you in fresh flesh. That is a new wine skin. Thank God we don't have to live in the old wine skin. God is giving a brand new wine skin for us to step into. And he's going to cover us. And he says, and you will live in the unity of the faith with an overcoming Christ-like identity that has manifested in God, demonstrating the fullness of God's power and all of Christ's heavenly authority, and you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the God that he's introducing us to, the God that can do anything anything. He says, with me, nothing is impossible. If he can take a bone in a valley. And see, a lot of times people think that's just a nice story. But the Talmud talks about this happening. And it says, those bones were the bones of the royals, kings, the leaders of Israel that were massacred and thrown out there. And God took one man, picks him up, transports him there, transports him back to Genesis, teaches him how to do what he needs to do, he drops him in that valley of bone, tells him what to say, he says it, and those bones came back together and they resurrected. It says that they went back and they did marry and they did live out their destinies. And Nebuchadnezzar, you can know that his knees were knocking, thinking, I thought I killed them, but their God resurrected a bunch of bones, and they are living men again, and they're walking around in my kingdom. Oh my. And Daniel was in that era. And we know the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, same Nebuchadnezzar. He erects a gold statue to himself and says, you're gonna bow down to my idol. You're going to listen to the sound of the music. And when that music sound and that frequency of humanism and fear and government control and politics and agenda is released, you're gonna bow down to it and you're gonna worship it. Well, those three guys, they go to Ezekiel. They say, hey, Ezekiel, we know, man, what you did for those guys who were castrated, woo, that was enough. But then they just cut them to pieces and then they were just a bunch of bones and you prophesied over them and now they're walking around with us. The king wants us to bow down and if we do, can you resurrect dust and ashes? You know, can you give us a little encouragement that if we step into that fiery furnace that we will walk out of it? And the Lord shut his ears and said, don't tell them. I want them to walk through this test and trial without a prophetic word. I want them to have faith in their God that they hear and that they won't bow to a world system no matter what the world system says to them because I have not given them a spirit of fear but of love and power and a sound mind. After they left Ezekiel's presence, the Spirit of the Lord says to him, they will live through this ordeal. But that is what gave them the confidence to stand before Nebuchadnezzar and say, King, it doesn't matter what you do. Our God is able to deliver us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow. And see, if you've already overcome death, death has no grip on you. As believers, there is no fear of death 
because we know where our home is. We are passing through this world, but our real home is in heaven. And we're going to ascend there and there's nothing that can stop that from happening. Nothing can take us out of God's hands. He's going to allow us to move there and live with him forever. So I just wanna encourage you with what's going on in the realm of the spirit and know that this is one of the most exciting times because the four winds are going to be working with us, releasing the creative realm of miracles, coming forth in new dimensions that we haven't seen yet. And Ezekiel is an example to us when we think, oh, that was just a story. But we have to go past just a story into realizing what did God really do? What is the power in us through a creative spoken word by the unction of the spirit that releases life. And God wants us to begin to imagine those dimensions that he's already called us to walk in. I wrote, a, during COVID was, a, COVID was good to me because my travel schedule canceled so I could write. And during that time, I wrote a five book series called Imagine. This one is imagine revealing the mysteries of God. Imagine transforming into your new identity. Imagine emerging beyond limitations. Imagine releasing the creative power of God. Imagine believe, see, and achieve your destiny. If we can engage our imaginations to begin to see ourselves the way God sees us, already in a completed state, because God is the alpha and the omega. And see, we get stuck on the beginning of something and we focus at where we are and God is already looking towards the end result. And that's the beauty of dreams. If we can allow a dream to take us to the end and we see what happened in the dream and we awaken as Solomon, who is now the wisest man because he asked God for an understanding heart that he might be able to hear the voice of God and operate with him. So God says, I'm well pleased with what you've asked because if we seek ye the kingdom of God first and his righteousness all these other things are added to us. So he said, I want you, God, first and foremost. I wanna know how to relate to you. And he said, I'll give you everything else. So when we position God first and foremost, then he's going to take us to that place where we are going to be able to receive him in a greater dimension. This is the first book I wrote called Dream Encounters. This is a how-to book. So if you're not interpreting your dreams, this teaches you all the ABCs, the one, two, threes of how to interpret your dreams. I want you to focus on your dreams and start writing your dreams down. I have a free online dream journal called Dreams Decoder where you can open it up an account there and put your dreams in there. If you can't interpret them, let me interpret them for you and we'll put it back in your dream journal. But if you begin stewarding the mysteries of God and finding out what God is saying to you, you can take that image and likeness on and operate in it. Now, I'm gonna move in faith here because Rennie asked me if I would take an offering. And so I want you to put your imagination out there and I want you to see a number of what God wants you to give. I want you to visualize it. But when you're visualizing it, I want you to see a 30, a 60, a hundredfold, a thousandfold, or without measure. What measure do you want to ask God for the multiplication of that number that you're seeing that you're gonna sow, what number are you wanting him to multiply it to return it back to you? Because we can't outgive God. If we will believe what his word says, he will 
pressed down, shaken together, running over, even caused men to pour into you. I had the honor of traveling with Benny Hinn years back, and he would always tell me, Barbie, money is just a tool. It's only a tool. And at that point, I was probably at $100 sewing. You know, I thought, oh, $100 here, $100 there, $100, $100. He goes, why don't you ask God to challenge you and ask God what he wants you to start sewing? So I said, okay, God, Ooh, please don't make it, be, you know how we are. We don't trust God. And so I said, okay. So I sowed a $1,000 seed. When I sowed that $1,000 seed, do you see this pretty ring I have on? Someone bought that for me. That was $10,000. Then I got taken on a shopping trip to Herod. You know, that made me happy. Then I got a jet ride on a nice jet. Then I got and I got and I got and I got. For a $1,000 seed, I got over $60,000 worth in a week. Because, you know, Malachi tells us, try me in this. And see, if I will not open the windows of heaven, and where are our blessings stored? When he created them in the Genesis, he put them in the glory realm. So we're either going to ascend through Jacob's ladder, through the window of heaven, or we're going to ascend through the Revelation 4 door into heaven, where it says the door is open, come up here and let me show you so God is wanting to challenge us. And I believe that when you're sowing, you're giving on your apps and your technology and all of that, that's wonderful. But I want you to say, God, vision number, I want you to see it. But then I also want you to go to the end where you have sown it and what are you reaping and bringing back into your possession? Because God will multiply it. And so God wants you having abundance. You know, he's not at the poverty. He's in the higher things of prosperity and blessings. But to me, even more than financial blessings, what we reap are the glory realm. That is the true riches. And see, God tests us in mammon because if we can't be faithful in the mammon, then he says, how can I trust you with the real treasures of darkness? And so he wants to pour out the dark treasures that have been stored up for us. And he's looking for the remnant who say money's just a tool. God created me, he can create more money. When the diamonds and things started falling, I was jealous at first because I didn't know how to enter into that realm. And I said, God, how come you're giving all my friends these huge diamonds and huge stones and huge everything? And you know, I like gaudy things. And so I don't want a little bitty thing. I want a big thing. I said, I want you to drop a stone on me that will knock me out. And when I wake up, I want to be able to carry it. And we, we've got to start thinking big. I've, I've been to heaven. I've seen the stones up there. They, that's where the, the emerald rainbow comes out of a massive emerald. So he, he started, he dropped a stone. It was teeny, it was little, but it was a breakthrough. If you're faithful with the little, he'll make you ruler. So I thanked him. I said, thank you, Lord. You know, when you thanked God, for the thing opening, he said, Lazarus came forth. God, I thank you that you hear me. So I said, Lord, thank you for my little diamond. But after that, diamonds would drop in my house. They'd be in my suitcase. They'd be different places. Once we open a realm, it is there. I want you to sew into that. Amen. Tuning in, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you next time.